What is going on, folks? It is K Spade the Prospect, back today with a brand new episode of Welcome to Sin City, where I bring you guys out to the desert, and I'll show you guys UNLV running Rebel-style football with a little bit of twist on it, man, because you know I'm the new head coach out here. First of all, I have to let you guys know, man, we ran up against Penn State. Penn State, they bout that action, man. They gave us a thrashing, and you can see, like, it's not just us. Alabama and Penn State putting hands to everybody. And y'all know Notre Dame is undefeated. Auburn as well. There's a few other teams undefeated. But you look at the amount of points that Alabama and Penn State putting up, man. Those teams are for real. But this, I ain't want to start this video off with negativity. Hold on now. I still got to talk about the Rebels. We up there, man. We just beat Houston in the last game. We are now ranked 16th in the nation. I remember the first couple of years, man. We was just begging for, you know, the coaching and, and the, the media and the BCS. For all that. We just wanted them to see us. And we here now. We right here. We in the top 20. So the only thing I, I said it ain't going to be negative, it is going to kind of be negative. Hold up. Now, at the end of that game against Houston, the coach's son, Case Bay Jr., my seed, Got an interception to seal the game, and he went down with an injury. Now, we didn't know how serious it was because that kid is tough. He's tough. He got right up, and he walked off the field like it was nothing. But I got some bad news. It is not nothing. It's pretty serious. The kid has a broken collarbone, and he's probably going to miss this entire season. They're saying 10 weeks. He got some of my blood in him. He probably going to be back. But anyway, folks, in today's game, man, the Rebels finally get into the conference play. Now, the conference play should be easier games for these guys. You can already see Colorado State has already lost the game on their side of the conference, and they also are winless on the season. Meanwhile, this will be the first conference game for the Rebels, but the Rebels are 2-1. They started this season off with one of the toughest schedules in college football. I'm ready for this game. I'll meet you guys down at the coin toss. Folks, before the coin toss, man, we get a quick pan of things here at Lubbock Field, and you can see it's a pretty good turnout for a team with no wins so far on the season. I'm talking about no wins. Now, these games kind of scare me because you take a team with no wins, they be hungry. Like, they really want this dub, bro. They're going to come out and probably fight the Rebels harder than anybody has fought this team this year. Look at this start to the game. I see you, Charles. Now, what scares me is the Rebels don't need to come out here and look past this team and go, oh, this is a bad team. They ain't got no wins. We can goof off because this will be the team that will set you up and embarrass your ass on TV. I've seen it happen before. But anyway, the Rebels come out. I like what they're doing. It looks like they want to get back to running the football. Now, they, they didn't get a chance to run the football very much, uh, very effectively in these first three games of the season because you got to understand, you know, they was out there against some of the best defenses in the nation. And Lexington Thomas, who we know is a beast, we've seen this guy last year finish second in the running for the Heisman, really has had an underwhelming year. It ain't really looked too great for him. So if I know the Rebels like I know them, they want to get back to running the football today and look at LT. Only six yards on that play, but you see how this man is darting around. Also, the offensive line took a major hit this year. We heard, oh my God, look at Armani Rogers. Look at Armani Rogers. Touchdown, Rebels. I put my soul in this shit with this ink all on my skin. Think before you ink, I got this ink all on my hands. Man, I'm growing up and I'm changing. Don't try to knock me out of my plans. Armani Rogers. This kid right here, man, look, let me tell you. Anyway, like I was saying, we talked to Coach K Spade, who himself admitted that this year he's got to do a better job of recruiting in the trenches. On both sides of the football, man, offensively and defensively. This offensive line just flat out isn't great this year, and it's not giving Rodgers a lot of time in the pocket, and it's not giving Thomas a lot of running lanes. So, you know, we got to get that right. The defense, however, has been the all-star, as to be expected with this team. I said it at a bad time. Dietrich Clark gets a 49-yard reception on a play that it looked like Darius Moulton was racing him to the end zone. Darius, what are you doing? What are you doing? First and 10 in the red zone. Colorado State quick read into the flats. And that's a big hit right there by Jackson. Who gets the starting job back? Now that Junior is injured. But on the very next play, Izzy Matthews gets in the end zone with a three-yard scamper. See? 
I told y'all, Colorado State is going to come out here and fight. This team wants this dub. You think they happy about having no wins on the season? Of course not. Of course not. Rebels go back to the ground. I like that. Later in that drive, fourth down, they are going for it. Rogers rolls out, throws a strange looking pass, but it was a dot to Makai Stevenson. First and 10. Face with a third down later in that drive. The pressure is on. You see what I'm saying? That's a great blitz right there, though. The blitz gets to Rodgers. He can't get the pass off. And the special teams unit still has to come out and punt the ball off. 7-7 game. Colorado State on the field with a chance to do something. And this is the Darius I want to see. This is what I like to see. And they probably going to give him a hard time about being tackled by the quarterback on that play. But a beautiful jump of that pass. He was back in the zone, watching the quarterback's eyes. Saw the pass, jumped it. And it probably should have been a pick six, but ain't nobody going to fuss at him right there. The offense comes back, takes over with great field position inside the red zone. They come out with some tricky stuff. And I think Rodgers probably should have kept that one. Tried to go with something like a triple option right there. Didn't really go well. Third and goal. Rodgers back to pass. The pressure's on. Throws a strike out of the back of the end zone. Look, that's the best miss pass you want to see. In a situation like that, the last thing you want to do is throw an interception or put yourself in a situation where you take this team out of field goal range because the field goal kicker is not that great. So you throw it out of the back of the end zone where nobody can make a play on it. Ooh, what a catch. Ain't like that, man. We got a 10-7 game. Colorado State out here fighting, though, y'all. They fighting. These Rams out here fighting. First and 10, Robles scrambles out the pocket. Has a little bit of green, and look at him. I didn't even know he was mobile like that. I mean, he took a big time hit at the end of that play, but he seems to be okay. Got up, shook it off. The drive continues. Third and short. Robles in the pocket. Throws a beautiful pass over to the tight end, who makes a tough catch. Gets across that yellow line, and this drive continues. What is going on? This is crazy. We've seen the Rebels. Oh, my God. Sit back. Cameron Carr right there. They don't get any easier than that, Cam. You got to catch those. We've seen these Rebels out here fighting with some of the toughest teams in collegiate football. To, to see this right here is a little, I don't know. I'm not going to say they're not prepared, but maybe they came out and tried to look past this team. They got to get right. Rebels on third down. The pressure's on. Throws the pass. I don't know how Josh is so wide open. Josh Garrett was wide open. Made a tough catch on the sidelines. The drive continues again, y'all. You got to be kidding me. Third and short, another opportunity for the Rebels to get off the field. Robles throws the pass. The receiver makes the catch, and he's going to be brought down shy of the first down marker. And after a crazy drive, the Rams settle for three. We got a 10-10 game. Hey, I'm telling you, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Lexington Thomas wrapped up before he can get going. He is under three yards to carry for the day. Third down, Rodgers, back to pass, throws a dangerous pass over to the tight end, who does a really good job of making the catch, falls forward, close enough to Coach Spade wants to go for it. It's going to be fourth and one. Looks like a long one, too. They go no huddle. They come back to the line of scrimmage. Rodgers makes a pre-snap read, drops back to blitz, his arm throws a strike over to Makai Stevenson. Makai looked like he was going to take it all the way to the end zone. He's brought down just shy, beautiful pass. Beautiful catch. Makai's been one of those receivers this year that kind of stepped up big, bigger than I thought he would do. Like, the speed that he has has really been, it's been a lifesaver for this team. Stevenson on the catch. It's going to, oh, no. Oh, Stevenson is limping off the field. He is calling for the trainers. We'll get updates on that. This team, The last thing they need is an injury to Makai Stevenson. On the very next play, Look, Lexington Thomas in the end zone. In this shit with this ink all on my skin. Think you ink, I got this Beautiful ink drive capped off with a touchdown. We got a seven-point game here in the second quarter, and we also got Colorado State still fighting. They fighting, y'all. They want this win. Dietrich Clark with his fourth reception of the game, and finally we get an update on Makai Stevenson, folks. The news is worse than I expected. It's going to be a torn growing. That's eight weeks for him. 10 weeks for Junior. I mean, I know it's the next man up mentality, but this team has already got enough stacked up against it this season. I hate to hear that, man. I hate to. Third and 10, Robles with time in the pocket. The pressure was finally getting in. Evan Austin probably should have got that interception. Nobody's upset, though. It's going to be fourth and long. Special teams unit kicks it back off. Rebel offense takes the field, looking to possibly go up multiple scores going into the half. That'll be good for them. Then they can kind of relax a little bit, get into the groove of things. Third and short. Why not? Hand it off to LT. Lexington Thomas on the run. Eight yards on the play. Easy first down. 
This is what I want to see. Only three yards to carry for LT, though. So they definitely need to continue to get LT to rock. We see the fullback, Jace Newell, right there on the reception. We also got word out of Rebels camp that Newell's been challenged by the coaching staff to kind of get into a little bit better shape. They want to see him be that type of fullback that can get out there and, and get the blocks on the backers. Like, he's a great blocker. They want him to get into a little bit better shape. Look at this pass. Touchdown, Rebels. shit with this ink all on my skin. Think before you ink, I got this ink all on my hands. Man, I'm growing up and I'm changing. Don't try to knock me out of my plans. The play action pass completely befuddled the DB, and that's a hell of a pass by Armani Rogers. What a pass. 24-13 is your score to have. Colorado State would get another field goal. I like where we at right here. Now you can see the Rebels get back into what we saw them do last year. You got a lead. The defense going to come out and play well. The offense can chew clock, run that football. That makes LT happy. That makes the game easier. That makes the defense tired. Everything works better. But it starts off with you being able to secure a lead, and it was tough for this team to do that early on. Third and short. Everybody in the box. It's a play action, and the pressure doesn't get to the quarterback. You know what happened. You got a guy making a catch, getting a lot of rack. You see a first and ten right here. Late in that drive on second and short. It's another play action, another check down, and a big time hit right here. Dalton Baker lowers the boom. Adam Prentice is actually still down. I don't know if it's a serious injury. I don't know. He might just be cramping, but he's, you know, you know what? This is a serious injury. The training staff is out. Some of the coaches are out. And, and folks, that's two big-time injuries in this game. I'm not sure what's going on, but <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a brutal sport, man. It's a gladiator sport. What can I say? Rubbles is sacked on the play right here. Six-yard loss. It's going to put him in a third and long later in that drive, and they dial up the screenplay. Gabe McCoy was right there. Right there, Gabe, if you get that pick, bro. Woo. Anyway, and again, I was wrong. I thought the Rebels would come out and run the football. Instead, they come out passing, but I like this pass right here. Luke check down to Lexington Thomas. He is definitely a receiving threat out of the backfield as well, and you can see what I'm talking about by his quickness and his elusiveness. That's a little three-yard dink route, man, but this man is spinning and winning and picking up a first down on a play that probably would have been a three, four-yard game for any other running back in the nation. And he's jawing. He's jaw I kind of like to see players get into it. Lexington Thomas and one of the Colorado State defenders was going back and forth after that play. I hope that gets LT going. Plus, I think the Rebels might feel some kind of way about losing Stevenson. By now, they've gotten the word of how serious the injury is, and these guys definitely want to get this win for Makai. You see Xavier Campbell get in the game. Physical running style, 12-yard gain on the play. I like what they're doing this year. Like, they're actually using both of these running backs more. LT right here getting in the end zone. Look, Touchdown, Rebels. I, I wasn't even sure LT got in. Usually in that situation, you see Xavier come in the game and get the carry. They gave it to LT. LT says, I got it. 31-16. Now the game is getting out of hand. I like this right here. I got to admit I'm biased. Want to see these Rebels get the win. Now the game is going the Rebels' way. However, Colorado State still don't have no quit on them. They out here fighting. The screenplay is dialed up on first and 10. The blocking does a great job of allowing Izzy Matthews to get the first down and a few more before he's pushed out of bounds. First and 10, they go to the air. And oh my God, what a hit. Look, these Rebels is playing, you hear me? They playing. However, it ain't stopping these Rams. They out here fighting too. First and goal, they're inside the red zone. Let's see what they dial up. They go no huddle. Getting a play from the sideline. You see some shifting around for the defense. Trying to confuse these guys. They're going to go with a toss. And uh, that's probably not going to work. Too much athleticism on this defense. Too much talent out here. That ain't going to get it done. They actually lose yards. Third down. They go back to the screen. Dalton Baker is over there and could not get the running back down. Izzy Matthews gets in the end zone. Folks, we still got a game. We still got a game. Crazy. 23-31 is the score. Actually, one touchdown and a two-point conversion. I had this game looking crazy. And the Rebels come back out passing again. I like, I don't know. They just like passing this football this year, I guess. Lexington Thomas straight up the A-gap. Seven yards the easy way. Still spinning off defenders and breaking tackles. He's over four yards to carry now. His carries are kind of low from what we are accustomed to seeing from last season. But the average is, is balancing out. Started off a little rough. About 2.8 a carry after the first quarter. Getting it right now. Beautiful pass across the middle. Lonnie Taylor in his first big game as the Rebels wide receiver. 
stepping up because of the injury to Makai Stevenson. That's what you want to see. Next man up. First and goal for Rodgers. Checking it over to the tight end, Charles, who gets in the end zone, trucks over a defender, and scores. Look, I put my soul in this shit with this ink all on my skin. Think before you ink, I got this ink all on my hands. Man, I'm growing up and I'm changing. Don't try to knock me out of my plans. You was bullshit in my grind mode. Was giving it all I can, boy. Wow, so folks, we get a studio update. I hope you guys didn't think this video was going to go without this update. The unranked. Miami Hurricanes, led by running back Mark Walton, upset that number six team in the nation, Lamar Jackson and the Louisville Cardinals, go down to the Canes. Hey, man, the Canes look like they're going to be all right over there. They three and one. I see y'all, Miami. I see you. As far as this game, man, we might as well draw the curtains. We can draw the curtains on this game right here, man. The Rebels definitely took care of business. It wasn't a pretty game. It wasn't the dominant performance I was expecting. But like I told you, Colorado State came out here and saw this game as an opportunity to kind of get things back on the winning track, and they wanted it. Those kids fought. They definitely wanted it. Player of the game goes to Armani Rogers, over 200 yards passing, also pretty dominant on the ground, rushing for one TD score. And, folks, that is all I got for today. I'm K. Spade the Prospects signing off from Colorado. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You did do me a favor, leave a like. We got a recruiting video coming up. We got some great game plays coming up, man. So if you guys are a fan of this series, stay tuned. I got that heat on the way. I'm out the next time, folks. Peace.